Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to dive into the chart options for the line chart and pretty much just show you how chart options work overall with chart.js. It's going to be really super cool. And you're going to see how you can dive into the documentation and be able to tweak things a little bit more to how you would like them. So the first thing I want to do before we get started is I want to give the answer to the challenge at the end of the last video. So I challenged you to have the bottom of the data axis here to be zero and not 20. Now, you would think there might be a property that might be like Y axis value or something like that, but really there isn't anything. And this is going to dive into the topic that we're going to be talking about in this video, which is going to be the third property inside of our chart object here. We had the type of line and we had the data inside of which we had our data set and labels. Let's actually come all the way down here to the bottom. Now here, notice how this isn't the last curly bracket, but the second to last curly bracket, we can have a comma. And the next thing we're going to have in here is a property called options. Okay. Now options is a property that can accept another object. Now inside of this, we're going to be able to define various other options. But for right now, we're going to define one that's scales then a colon, which is also going to accept an object, and then y axis, which is going to accept an array of objects. So we can have an array, and inside of that, an object. Now, inside of here, we have the property of ticks. Now, ticks is going to accept another object. So as you can see, we're really drilling down here. But ticks is now where we finally have the ability to say begin at zero. Now, this is going to be a true or false Boolean value here. So we can say, hey, on the scales on the y axis, make sure the ticks begin at zero. So now if we refresh, you can see this goes all the way down to zero, up to 100. Our valleys no longer look like they're at zero. And it scales really nicely. Now, it depends on what type of chart you're going to make it at. Obviously, you can see the default option is for the ticks to uh, start at the very bottom of the value, which is, of course, this case, 20. Now, you might be wondering, well, how in the world was I supposed to know that? Well, other than the fact that it shows up in the documentation here, if you if you search for ticks, it's also in one of the first examples. But it, where we want to actually find that is if we go to line chart and then chart options, you'll see we have some options here, such as show lines, which is just a Boolean. We don't want to show any lines. Let's turn show lines to be false. So under options, we had scales here. We can just say show lines equals false. Make sure you have a comma after that. Save that. Let's come back, refresh. And as you can see, we just have these data points. We no longer have the actual line or the border that's connecting them. So let's get rid of that because this chart really doesn't look great that way. But if you have a line chart without the lines, then you have sort of just like dot plots on a, uh, a chart here. And that could be totally useful. We also have really nice descriptions going on over here about what each of this stuff is. Let me have this in a way you can actually read it better. So as you can see, it's this the point radius elements dot point radius defines the size of the point shape. So uh, the default is three. So it's going to be three pixels. And that's why we have those little tiny circles. If you wanted bigger ones, you could always change that through elements point and then element point radius. Okay, and you can see it accepts just a number. Now, in addition, you could see that we have scales, which is what we obviously did. We had scales and then y axis. And then you might be wondering, well, how do, how do you know about ticks? Well, if we come here, you can see the scales documentation. Now, if you want to see the scales documentation, I noticed this link doesn't work. Uh, but what you want to do is scroll down here and click uh, scales right here. And as you can see, we have a whole lot of stuff that scales takes. So as you can see, chart.js 
is really full featured. We got up and running in absolutely no time, but let's say you wanted to make any of these changes. You can come in here and see inside of scales, ticks begin at zero. Ticks font color, font family, font style, max rotation. And these are all gonna be things that you're setting in the object, in the options. We can even have ticks mirror, or you can reverse the, do the order of the labels and the ticks. So let's go ahead and even do that. We have ticks reverse, let's set it to true. So we can have in Y axis, ticks, we can say reverse true. Wrap that up with a comma and let's head back. Let's check out what this does. And as you can see, our chart is now starting at zero at the top. So it just totally inverse this. Now this chart right here wouldn't be the most fun thing in the world to read. It sort of looks like it's like cut out and this is the data here. So I can't exactly recommend using this reverse for this particular type of example, but I, obviously I think there are different charts that are going to work better with different options, but the control to be able to change those options is here. And everywhere you go inside of options, we have scale, all this sort of stuff. In addition, we have everything that's also under chart options here. So this is really great. As you could see, let's talk about the difference between the data and the options. The data sets here are essentially going to be what is the data object is going to have everything to do with the data itself, where the options are going to have everything to do with the chart on the whole itself. So obviously for changing the color of one of the particular lines, you're going to do that within data. If you're changing something like the font family on one of the axes, you're going to do that within options. So that's the difference between options and data. We have now covered all three of these properties of our chart, which is type, data, and options. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about global properties. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to get the rest of these videos before they're available on YouTube, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and you can either purchase this series for streaming, digital download, or you can become a Level Up Pro and watch this series along with other early access Level Up tutorial series. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.